Necrovision is a first-person shooter set in an alternate history World War I, developed by the Farm 51 and published by IC Company, 505 Games, and Asper Media, depending on the region. And well, this game and its prequel standalone expansion pack Lost Company, they're hidden gems on Steam. This game is often on sale for just a dollar or less sometimes. And a little bit more when included in a bundle with Lost Company. And well, for that amount of money, you can't really go wrong. And in fact, this dollar might be the best dollar you ever spent. Because Necrovision is a really good shooter. Like a solid 7 out of 10, and Lost Company is just as good, if not better. So let's talk about Necrovision and why it is worth your hard-earned singular dollar. Necrovision, as I mentioned before, is an alternate history World War I shooter. And I know what you're thinking. A slow and tactical shooter set in a trench? No. That's not it, but points are trying. Necrovision is more along the lines of Painkiller, to whom it shares a developer. I would say at times it's actually more like Doom 3, and then at other times more like Doom 2016. It's a strange game for sure. It's a World War 1 arena shooter mixed with a survival horror, and that it does work. Excluding some issues that I'll touch on later in the video. So, let's do a quick story synopsis, as you're probably used to in my videos by now, and as you know, it probably won't be short. But guess what? It will be, because the story is kinda shit and not really worth talking about in the first place, but I'll do it for you, listener. Necrovision takes place in 1916, around and during the Battle of the Somme. You play Simon Buckner, an American newly recruited into the British Army. You, as Simon, basically become the only person that can save the world from a demonic invasion. So you'll fight demons, zombies, Germans, and vampires, who happen to be locked in an eternal war of the demons. So yeah, this is some very otherworldly shit. As a shooter released during the late 2000s, you can expect certain elements to turn up. Limited health regeneration, vehicle segments, challenge modes, the ability to aim down sights, a dedicated melee button. Ever wanted to kick a zombie across the room and shotgun on his friend? You can do that. Or maybe you wanted to stab a zombie through the head of a mounted bayonet, or hell, maybe you wanted to use a sword and a pistol. You can do all that and more in Necrovision. Necrovision is kind of like a combat sandbox in a way. It feels pretty fucking good. Headshots are easy enough to pull off and the game recognizes that as a combo. And well, the thing about Necrovision is combos aren't just like text on your screen. They have a gameplay benefit. When you do a combo, these little lightning strikes hurt nearby enemies. Most things count as combos, melee kills, melee damage and shooting with a gun, just using a gun, grenades, it all counts as a combo which means crowd damage which is incredibly important as the action ramps up in the later game. But what's different in Necrovision is the combat. It's pretty different from other games released in the same year. I mean, like Modern Warfare 1 was released in 2009 as well, and these two games really could not be any less dissimilar. Necrovision, for its combat systems, is much more similar to shooters from the late 90s to early 2000s. Its focus on combos was a rarity during the late 2000s as the industry was moving towards cover-based shooters and military tactics-based shooters. Necrovision is just pure chaos on the other hand. Necrovision has a lot of weapons that you can use, and unlike many shooters released at the time, you can carry all of them, not just two or three. This gives you so much more freedom in which weapon to use at what time. Maybe you like how the SMG handles, but the shotgun is much more useful towards this other enemy type. But you also like using the sniper rifle. Well, you don't have to choose with Necrovision, and that's surprisingly freeing, especially after 11 years of two weapon shooters with the occasional title which split from that formula. And talking about combat, let's talk about how it actually feels. Weapons in Necrovision feel great. Each gun, as I mentioned before, has a use or is versatile enough that it is useful for nearly everything. And something that I want to give props to the devs for is how much they stuck to the World War 1 setting. It's all era appropriate apart from some late game weapons. Throughout the game, you will be mainly using a trench shotgun and a bolt action rifle for a rather large bulk of the game. Of course, you do get an SMG and a light machine gun, but it's a shooter so I can give them a little bit of leniency on that. And not to mention, this is an arena shooter, so you need that extra firepower as the game ramps up. The amount of enemies increase and increase and increase until you're slaughtering hundreds of enemies in a span of minutes. I could not imagine doing that with a bolt action rifle. This game is kinda nuts in that respect, and it does have some issues later game, but it averages out to be good anyway. So I want to change gears now, and I want to talk about some issues this game has. Starting minor and working up to frustrating. So. This game has some extremely dodgy AI and dodgy physics. 
Enemies frequently walk in the walls or get stuck on geometry. They pre-fire around corners. They beeline along very, very, very obvious navigation nodes. It's not too bad as you are a killing machine, but it is noticeable and it can be annoying at times. The broken physics engine can send you flying. It can send objects flying at you. You can walk over an object and it will just send you flying into the fucking sky like Skyrim giants. And yeah, you take full damage, so sometimes you, this will kill you. Normally it won't, but it might if you have reduced health. But I can't really discuss my other issues with this game because they occur around three quarters of the way in and it does relate to story and setting. So I'm going to put a massive spoiler warning here if you are interested in experiencing this game for yourself, Untarnished. So, um, I'm going to put this as eloquently as I can. Late game in Necrovision is terrible. Nearly everything that can go wrong goes wrong, especially with weapons and level design. Late game weapons aren't nearly as nice to use as the early game stuff. And as a cherry on top, they replace them because you don't get ammo for those early game weapons in later eras. And well, the lore reason for this is because you're in hell or you're inside a vampire city, so they don't really make 762 down here. But you do get a demon hand and some SMGs. The SMGs are effectively just modern day guns and thus they kind of ruin the vibe of the game. The demon hand, however, is actually a really nice addition and is great for handling crowds as the fireball ability either just kills enemies outright or sends them flying. This gives you time to reload or to simply get some more ground between you and them. It's actually pretty good, but back to the bad things. But what I think is the worst part about this last quarter of the game is enemy variety and level design. It's, well, it's terrible, I'm not going to put it lightly, it's really bad. You don't get introduced to new enemies or anything, it's the same two types of enemies just sporting in front of you and sprinting at you. It's the same two types just over and over and over and over. And for level design, well, I don't think it even counts as level design. A large open cubes with doors at either end, I guess technically it does count, but it's not good, that's what I mean. It's, it's boring when compared to early game levels. And to be completely honest, early game levels aren't exactly the best levels ever made. They're good and they do what they need to. But late game levels are just terrible. Enemy spawn triggers are another repeating problem in the late game as enemies sometimes spawn behind you if you move too quickly through an area. And this just leads to death time and time and time again. This isn't to say that the entire last quarter of the game isn't worth your time, I still had fun of it, it just got on my nerves when I had to clear entire rooms again and again and again, because enemies kept spawning. But this game, especially in the last quarter, does have some really cool sequences. Um, for starters, you get to ride a dragon, that was actually pretty cool and I really did not expect it at all. It broke up the combat and also just kind of felt good. There's also mech sequences which are really good, but... Um, end game you get this like special mech and it has less functionality than the normal mechs you encounter earlier so I don't really know if it's worth talking about at all. And this will be interesting to people listening I hope anyway. Lost Company, the standalone expansion which released a year later, um, fixes nearly all of these issues. Like it's technically a much better game Lost Company is a much more focused experience, but it is nearly half the length of the original, so keep that in mind. Uh, this time you play as Jonas Zimmerman, the antagonist of the original game before he turns crazy. You pretty much do the same shit, you're a soldier, you get contacted by a vampire who turns you on dead and gives you combo powers, and later you get the demon hand, you must go to hell. It even features some of the same maps, but they're remixed and reorganized, and honestly, different enough that I didn't realize it at first until I looked back through the footage. And yeah, Lost Company is still Necrovision, don't worry about that, although I would say that Necrovision is more of a corridor shooter and less of a wide open arena shooter, which honestly, it suits itself better than Necrovision's style of combat anyway. It also helps alleviate the enemy spawning issue because they would either spawn a well before you enter that particular corridor, or they spawn at the end of it and you don't notice them spawning. But just because it's more of a corridor shooter doesn't mean you don't have a choice on where you go. You routinely get multiple ways to progress through particular areas. A building will have two established ways which offer different experiences. One might be a secret area, while one is the desired path. 
it actually works pretty well. But disappointingly, the, the same issues with light game are still present here, although to a much, 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 much lesser degree. I would say that the late game in Lost Company is far more enjoyable. You still ditch World War 1 guns for like these vampire SMGs, but you do it for a much shorter time now and you aren't getting swarmed by thousands of enemies this time either. Why? Because the vampire guns seem to do way more damage now. You can rip and tear, if you will, through hell and vampire cities. Vehicle segments are way more enjoyable, as it isn't just mechs, it's a plane and a tank. It's pretty good, no dragon here, however, so if you really want to ride a dragon, just play the original game. So, should you buy these games? Yeah, like honestly, they're, they're great, they're super cheap, so even if you don't like them, you only spend a couple bucks at most, and chances are you might already have them in your library. And at that point, you might as well give them a go. The combat's fun, story's decent enough, it's wacky and fun. Voice acting is also fucking hilarious at times. So all up, these two games are a solid seven. Go and buy them. It's a pretty much guaranteed fun time, even despite some weird late game design decisions.